Good afternoon. Hi, look, my name is Edward Niembro and I am from Luminosa Investment Property in Barcelona. And I'm going to do in this video, this short webinar for you, and really to help you why people are investing in Barcelona. So I'm going to give you, I'll be giving you some of the tips, some of the ways we can actually maximize uh, our return on investment and how can we also minimize risk. Naturally, I'm going to be talking about Luminosa and what we do to help you find that property. And more importantly, why are people investing in Barcelona? I mean, like there are so many places to invest. And why is Barcelona a place should be a place front and center of your mind? OK, so let's get going. Just bear with me. I'm just going to put on the presentation. <clears throat> Let me share my screen. Fantastic. So why is Barcelona a place to invest? Now, I'm sure you would have heard of Barcelona and you can see in this photo here, you've got um, the Sagrada Familia, the beautiful basilica that's being built, that's still being built, that will be completed. I've, I've been told in the year 2026, which would be the 100th year anniversary of the passing away of the architect, the famous um, Gaudi, Antonio Gaudi. And uh, you can see here in the streetscape, the, the beautiful, um, I guess, the blocks that are synonymous with Barcelona and how it has grown uh, in its shape, in its form. And one of the reasons why that people do love Barcelona. So in today's presentation, I just want to talk to you more specifically about maximizing returns and minimizing the risk in today's market. Naturally, Barcelona will be the focus of our discussion. And just to let you remind you, I'm from Luminosa Investment Property here in Barcelona. And you can see here, um, Barcelona is not a city that just stands still. Um, you can see here the green corridors that they are building up, that they are connecting through the city. Uh, it, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful place uh, to be. It really is quite something. So I'll be explaining a little bit more about this as that presentation goes along. So <clears throat> talking about Barcelona, investment opportunities, Luminosa and example projects that we are working on at the moment. So Barcelona, you can see in the map here, um, it's on the Mediterranean Sea, it's on the east coast of Spain there in the Iberian Peninsula, and you can see it has a full access to the Mediterranean Sea. You can see the, the connections here connected through to Paris, London, to the west, go to, to, um, to North America, further to Northern Europe and down south in towards, uh, towards African continent. It really is the gateway to a lot of uh, initiative, a lot of, uh, geographically is the gateway to the Mediterranean. And Mediterranean is really the, I guess, what you call the tourist hub of Europe. And Barcelona pretty much was smack bang in the middle. Notably, you can see Italy there to be further to the east, like the, the boot there. And it's the Roman times that actually, during the Romans actually came and actually started a settlement in Barcelona, which was called Barcino back, um, I believe it was like uh, 100 AD, uh, sorry, 100 BC. And Barcelona pretty much was firmly part of the, the Roman Empire. And of course, it naturally grew from that. But you can see it has a very strong identity. And even 150 years ago, you can see here in the beautiful architecture here of um, the Batlao, Casa de Batlao, on the left side there, the San Paul uh, Hospital on the top right, and another Gaudi. Uh, uh, project there on the bottom right, the uh, Casa Mila or La Pedrera. And you can see that Barcelona really does appreciate and does have a very strong affinity to the streetscape and to the people and to the sense of place. And so admittedly, that has been such an important factor now that people start to realize, well, hang on a second, they've got this amazing, attractive architecture way back and 
it's actually still going on, although there's been a period of where like a lot of places have been a lot of poor architecture. But really, a lot of the the barrios, the the, the suburbs, the small towns, the quartier in Barcelona still has that very strong identity. And you can see here, what's happening here is people are starting to appreciate this and they're starting to open this up here. So you can see in the bottom right-hand corner here, the super blocks of the rescue, Barcelona's plan to give streets back to residents. So there is this renewal phase happening there because people actually do appreciate the value of quality of life. Not only is it access to the sea, access to the water, access to the mountains, the Pyrenees, and other great cities, but also it's access to when you get out of your property and having uh, a place that's convivial, a place that has this vitality, and uh, you can speak to your neighbors. And so this is what makes Barcelona uh, a very attractive place. So I'm gonna be talking to you a little bit more about um, Barcelona itself here, but you can see that the resilience of Barcelona and in particular Catalonia, which you may have heard of at about five years ago, there was this movement, which it's definitely gone now, of independence. And that pretty much scared a lot of businesses. Um, that was pretty much a, a shock, I would say, to how almost unilaterally <laughs> the government here, the government of the time, was willing to risk everything for the sake of forming this independence, which lasted less than 24 hours. It was declared, but um, Carlos Piedmont, uh, he actually left uh, in exile and is now living in Belgium, I do believe, um, waiting, uh, well, he's a member of European Parliament. But really, there were a lot of questions asked what was going to be the impact of this is it still bubbling on the surface and it has not been bubbled on the surface it's very clear in the spanish constitution that no region can actually self-declare themselves um, independent without a referendum which is put to the whole of spain and guarantee that all of spain will not want barcelona or catalonia to be out on its own so definitely this um, this independence movement was stopped dead in its tracks but also shows the resilience of this great city um, it's really important to, to, to know that cities how they uh, bounce back from such a um, an event like this um, because Catalonia does have a separate language it is Catalan and people here do identify in a different way. They don't necessarily identify themselves as Spanish. They definitely identify themselves as Catalan. And that needs to be respected. But it's a very international city. English, would you believe it? it you can hear it everywhere. A lot of business here coming from Anglo-speaking uh, uh, Anglo countries, notably the UK, Australia, Canada, the US, who are moving over here, who are bringing their workforce, who are recruiting locally as well to really appreciate like the the quality of life that is available here um, in Europe. So a little bit about me, um, just a little bit about me. I was caught up by all of this, um, how would you say, it was pretty much the Olympics of 1992. I, I'm, I'm, I'm approaching 50 years of age, I'm 48. And 1992, I was the final year of high school. And it just had this mystique about all previous Olympic Games. It didn't really carry much, didn't have much feeling, but the Barcelona Games, they were quite something. And that just stayed with me. And I was, you know, I'm from Australia, Sydney, Australia. And when I was finishing university, we said, look, the big thing was to go backpacking. Was really, well, what is, um, what's Barcelona? It's a great place to visit. And people just wanted to come to Barcelona. And so through, through um, how would you say, through life, I guess, um, through hardship and so forth, I ended up being here through my mother who ended up buying a, a place before she passed away. And it was pretty much my, uh, my entry point to Barcelona. And so I have been mesmerized by architecture and I have been investing in property and I have been making a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes, 
but I have learned so much about this. And so one of the things that why I'm working with Luminosa is to really share the, 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 the common pitfalls that investors can make and they do make. Uh, even if you're a local, they do make mistakes. So this is something that um, I, I really want to, to help. And it's something that, because I love property, I'm an urban planner, and I really love the way cities and how people interact with cities and how the ecology and how transport and the accessibility of cities is such a, uh, an amazing thing. And so I understand why people do love Barcelona, and, but also you just gotta be careful. Okay, so in this case, I just want to share some of this, these tips with you. So let's go in Barcelona. So as I was saying before, the strategic location, it is right on the Mediterranean Sea, unlike Madrid, the capital of Spain, which is in the center of the country. Barcelona has the nice sea breezes, the cool breeze. And as you can appreciate next year in 2024, they're going to have the America's Cup. And so, which is a, a big coup. And I do know because Australia had the America's Cup, well, actually Perth uh, many years back, and it was such a big, big event. Uh, tourist dollars in terms of prestige, in terms of kudos, uh, in terms of just the, the sporting event, the spectacle, it is really quite something. Uh, so um, this is happening here. And the same before the quality of life, whether it's, um, healthcare, whether it's food, whether it's education, the climate, people just love coming here. And as you can see here on the left here, you've got the, the modern, um, which is proposed, which is going to be built the, the Sant train station, which has access to the TGV. Uh, France, obviously connected due to the European um, standardization of the rail line, the TGV, the Spanish equivalent TGV, the AVE, um, pass through uh, Barcelona naturally, and it is a gateway to all the parts of Europe. You can see here on the top right, the, the flights leaving from, uh, leaving from Barcelona and going to all other parts. I can just move my little, my little screen there. I can't seem to do that. And, um, and also on the bottom right there, it is what we're showing the, the shipping routes of the cruise liners that come here. You can see Barcelona here and then to France to Monaco, to Italy, to Greece, to Turkey, to Crete and various other places. And so it really is uh, well connected, extremely well connected in terms of quality of life, in terms of the, in terms of food, the markets here, the um, Enrique Mireles, you can get the, the Santa Materina, uh, Caterina market here on the, on the left side, a beautiful place. You can just go and buy fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, meat, fish, and really just appreciate um, that this is all freely available and it's absolutely not super expensive and it's not tourist prices here. You got the shopping here, for example, top right here, the reformed old bullfighting ring is now converted into cinema slash shopping center. And you got the port there on the bottom right there, which is a beautiful promenade accessing shops accessing uh well obviously the port and the beaches just further to the left there known as barceloneta so a growing economy barcelona growing economy robust uh, economy we we're saying before the resilience but also the the growing of uh, international companies that are coming here and i'm going to explain that a little later on the presentation and clearly the city is on the move showing you some of the images there of what what is proposed it's just incredible. Um, the port here on the left-hand side to re regenerate the, the, the old marina, um, but not just to just to do a simple standard construction. This is a sustainably uh, green uh, modern technology <clears throat> and naturally not impeding on the beaches that are there. And so it's going to be very permeable. People are going to be able to work through, walk through there and access this is not going to be some uh, how would you say it, like a, a, um, separated uh, from the rest of the town. The famous uh, Camp Nou football stadium there on the top right, which is being currently under construction, uh, is going to be the, Europe's biggest uh, football stadium, seating over 105,000 people. And here you can see here on the bottom right, um, the trams integrating into the Avenida Diagonal, 
and uh, really just this mobility of people getting to work, getting back home, and and obviously making it accessible for people just to to do the day to day things. I want to talk about the fundamentals of investment here. And so one of the things that people do find and can be a bit of a, a barrier uh, for people who live abroad, who are considering coming, uh, wanting to invest their, their, their money. What about the taxes? What about um, um, the laws? With the advent of the EU, the European Union, this has definitely harmonized the existing tax structures, the existing, um, um, how would you say, the legal framework of how property and how legislation is implemented and rolled out in various states. And when I refer to states, I mean France, Italy, and in this case, Spain. And so this streamlining of laws and legislation has made it easier for people to actually do business, to, to live, to work, and opening up the borders, as you're probably well aware, of people within Europe. And you can't do that if each country has a very different tax, a very different uh, legal system. And so the, I guess the trickle down effect of this is property and how real estate has benefited tremendously from the EU and how this has opened up the doors for investors to come into Europe and in particular Barcelona. So saying here before transparency of the property laws, um, even if you don't speak at the land, naturally you need to understand the, the local um, um, customs, I guess, because there are different planning laws, because there are there's a lot more heritage buildings in Barcelona, there's a lot more, um, um, how would you say, other, um, you know, for example, like parks, in terms of transport, in terms of accessibility, in terms of height restrictions, in terms of depth of building, in terms of how an apartment can function. Parking, for example, every city has their own particular um, um, planning structure, the planning laws, for example, building laws as well. So you do find differences naturally between the cities in Europe and naturally in Spain, but generally speaking, investing in buying, selling, renting, generally speaking, it has been standardized, it has been harmonized. And in terms of taxes, in terms of what you pay, it isn't um, a big surprise or it isn't, what's that about? Like capital gains tax, for example, or in terms of um, um, tax you pay on property, um, commissions and so forth. This is not new because every country pretty much has these forms of taxes. So you just need to be well informed. Capital appreciation and the good thing about um, Barcelona is due to its brand, due to its history, due to its sense of place, uh, it has appreciated over long term. And it is pretty much very resilient, very resilient. And some suburbs that we invest in for investors, they are what we call blue chip places uh, to reside. So even though there may be shocks in the system, you're pretty much going to definitely make your money. Okay. High rental yields. There's a very low vacancy rate uh, in um, in Barcelona because there are a lot of people moving in here because the economy is growing. It is the engine room of Spain and people are appreciating the work-life balance and they're trying to capitalize on a growing economy but actually having that quality of life that employees do demand or nomads basically living packing up their country and want to go live abroad in another place because they appreciate the quality of life that is on offer the the exoticness the distinct the the spanish um I guess the, the Spanish language, the culture is enticing for a lot of people uh, to pack up and relocate here as well. So these are solid foundations. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Luminosa. So Luminosa, we've been in the business since 2005 and Frank um, Van Weyen, he is Dutch and he, this is pretty much his company. He has, uh, well, he is living in Barcelona and he is married to 
a um, or his wife is a property lawyer and naturally they both speak English and so this partnership pretty much helped cement the Luminosa um, the Luminosa company and the good thing here is I want to I want to make sure just that we're clear here is that we focus on traditional properties we have as I said before I made mistakes Frank in his in his life he's also made mistakes and he admitted to that and so we both know what we're good at we both know what is sort of so so you might get a good return but the market changes the return is not there because it doesn't have that blue chip value and the fact that we both that, that we the company love architecture that is pretty much the the thing that unifies us um, we really appreciate to restore and to add value to give life to a lot of these traditional properties these period homes that pretty much are coming up on the market and nobody wants to buy them especially the local people local people because it's just not modern enough they don't want to spend the money and uh, or perhaps they're just you know they, they want to go somewhere else and so this provides an opportunity for people who do want other parts of spain want to move to barcelona and actually international people who want to come into barcelona and so the good thing the other point i want to mention to you also about luminosa is the fact that we are highly respected amongst the stakeholders in the property the real estate industry in barcelona and so we do have a strong liaison with naturally lawyers because mercedes through euro law for the legal business she has um, access to a lot of properties who do come under um, under um, for sale basically um, because of problems legal problems of the of the owner and the properties need to go on the market we have a close association with the banks with other real estate agents and naturally with the private um, with the private sellers the private sector as well so we have this very strong relationship that pretty much gives us direct access for our investors to gain a good start a good head start at the very beginning from day one okay because we know or we have access to unlike other real estate agents who are promoting their properties on their website these are the properties for sale we don't have that we don't have a database we don't keep that but when we have an investor who comes on board say ed frank look i'm interested in going um investing with you guys what have you got then we make the phone calls we call our contacts we call the stakeholders that we know look we were looking for a property and this and this and this and this we give them the criteria and we pretty much without a doubt get properties that you can choose that we will inform you about what is a good potential with, with, with the most growth and so that is how we work so we just don't work like a traditional real estate agent because we're not like that but we do have access to properties before they are publicly listed which is really important for investors what is the strategy that we do okay step one we find the most ideal property to you once you say please find us something we will go out there we will do the search we will find use our contacts and we will get you something something to choose from naturally and we will choose in specific areas we're not going all around barcelona we're specific barrio specific areas that we are targeting because we know return is high we know that um people these properties are demand even there's a downturn there is a high demand for these to even to rent out these properties once you've done the renovation uh, to people who want to live in these houses because people love the architecture. People love the, the feeling of living in a place that scents and it has character. Okay, so we find a property for you. That's step one. Here are examples of a lot of the properties who are coming up on the market. And this is something that um, I'm familiar with. This is something that actually I worked on. And um, you can see here, it's pretty much, it's pretty much a nothing, nothing, pretty interesting there at all um because what's happening is all the nice architectural features are hidden they're hidden in the ceiling they're hidden on the walls they're hidden under the these vinyl tiles 
So the, the, the character is there. You just need to know how to access it. And sometimes a lot of things, these things can also be damaged as well. So you need to have skill craftsmen to really try and um, bring out the, the, the character, its essence out there. But, when you, but you don't see it. You don't see it all. But we do know because we are very familiar with the types of buildings that are on offer, the types of architecture that is typical of that particular building. And we are very clear in terms of where these properties are located. You can see here beautiful streetscape, nice wide footpaths. A lot of them have not all of them, but some of them have um, nice uh, sea views. But some of them do definitely have beautiful uh, views to uh, to the boulevards, to the um, to pasajes that we call them, to parks and to um, transport routes, which are nice and silent. And so, basically, just an example. This is step one. So, what you're going to see, this is what you, this is what we, this is what you will find when we're trying to find property for you. You're not going to find anything like, oh, that looks great. It's not okay. It doesn't want to show you. This is what it is. Step one. We're finding because we know the gold nuggets are there. Yep, the kitchen. Um, yeah, pretty much. It's just it's just what it is. I mean, these places have been built on. This is like a, this is like 120 years old. This particular apartment. Well, actually, the one on top right there in La Rambla, um, that's actually 200 years old, and the one on the bottom there, bottom right, is actually 100 or so years old as well. So these are really old places. Step two. This is where we get the design, the construction team pull together, which we, um, which Frank, that that's his baby. That is his thing. Um, he loves the designing, the interior designing, the working with the architecture, which we have in-house and the builder, which we have in-house. Just getting back to step one, I just wanted to clarify here. In terms of the purchasing, this is where the legal team, Mercedes, and this is where I myself will really steer, help you to try and to find the property and to negotiate a price that is what we think is the real value. Okay, so we will work hard to get you a good price because once you get a good solid um, purchase price, then, you know, the profit, obviously, at the end of it, the profit is what it is. But if you don't negotiate hard enough or you're just not quite sure what's on offer, um, you're losing the money at the very beginning. So you really, from day one, it's so important to really have a very good team to, to really help you on this process. Step two, the construction. Again, this is um, something that um, Frank has been working on. And again, during, due, to, due to his great contacts, he has established excellent relationship with suppliers, uh, whether it's bathrooms, whether it's um, um, cabinet making, whether it's woodwork, whether it's industrial um, metal work, um, tiling, polishing floor tiles. He has a fantastic team that is been producing beautiful apartments. Okay. But if you want more, we'll provide more information. So step two is the construction phase. And you can see here, we're starting to some of the work that has to be to take away pretty much the, the old stuff that really needs to, um, <laughs> if you take it away so you can actually find the beauty the jewel that's um the the gold nugget that's actually hidden behind there okay and you can see here the roof uh, starting to be exposed there that was like the the roof um here here on the top uh, on the left side here and you're moving on here the roof is starting to take shape here the the vault of catalan ceilings not all apartments have this i, I want to be clear that even though it might be an old building, they might have got rid of this as well. So you need to sort of do this part of the step one, the process of due diligence. You need to really understand and to know what exactly is hidden in the apartment. What is the real value, the architectural value? Is there not only its location, but also what can you do with it? Because that is also where you can, where you can sort of manipulate, where you can move and shape and mold the interior layer is distribution for for people for for a modern lifestyle okay so that's 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 quite important to understand to have that that image that vision um at the beginning and we um we we provide that we, we, we because of our um our expertise on this matter 
And you can see here on the left hand, we're starting to restore some of the brickwork there on the walls, but again, putting up um, uh, other features there of modern tiling and so forth to really start to give it its um, its combination of the the past with the with the contemporary um, present. Step three, sell. Now, you're an investor here. It's not for you to live in the apartment. If you want to live in the apartment, by all means, fine. But it's for you to sell, okay? Because it is a demand of these apartments to be lived in, yes? So your job is to be pretty much the, the catalyst of taking something that has pretty much been scorned on and taking it into something that is beautiful, that is rich, that it can be appreciated. And so that is step three, selling these. We do the staging, we do the photography, um, and we obviously do the um, um, finding the, the potential buyers as well. So you can see here, um, these apartments, they're all, they're all different apartments. Um, the, the, you know, a lot of work has been done uh, to, uh, to, to bring it out, to bring out its, um, its, um, its beauty. And you can see it is not stuck in 100 years ago, 200 years ago. It is actually really bringing out and giving that nice modern flavor with all the modern conveniences as well. Here, the polishing the floorboards, integration with the, the beams, for example. Some, some beams are quite different. You can see there in the top left, um, on the right here, top right, um, that's just an example of something of a more of a, a more of a, an, a modern apartment that we worked on. The top right here, which is right next to um, the Sagrada Familia, but uh, we just give you an example here of a taste of some of the the modern features that we go for. Um, beautiful, some some of the innovation here in the bottom right hand corner. There was, there was like a a hallway, but we integrated that, put in the kitchen there to give it more space to open up to create another bedroom to for for um, the future buyer so they can see that there is a nice uh, flow to the apartment without creating any dead space or dead zones and so again this is the innovation this is the design interior design and making it all work so the benefits of the strategy um i just i just want to um let you know five to eight months Six months is pretty much the standard. Um, we're coming up with a strategy of how we can actually short circuit that, how we can bring that forward. Um, but we'll, um, but that's something that um, we're working with the architects and uh, in terms of how we can create photo montages, um, renderings, um, and because investors, they just want to buy um, pretty quickly. So actually in some cases, in a couple of cases, we actually sold apartments actually within, um, within two and a half months. But again, I'm not promoting that at the moment. But that time frame is a bit fluid. Okay, the return on investment fifteen net, fifteen percent net. Um, that's post COVID. Um, before COVID, things were fine. COVID obviously did have an impact on a lot of people, a lot of businesses, a lot of countries, a lot of cities naturally. And so, putting that aside, the the return on investment has been. Um, pre-COVID levels uh, in a lot of cases they even starting to surpass that so there is a very healthy return on investment naturally you have your own taxes so what um, if there is a range between Spain and the US Spain and Canada Spain and you know, um, the UK France for example um, there are reciprocal arrangement tax arrangements um, that can be done to reduce your tax um, to reduce your tax and and also something else that we do uh, recommend is also setting up a company here um so you're paying less gst less sales tax less um, um vat and what we call um but we can talk about that later on but the, there are ways that we can reduce your taxes and you can reclaim back the vat um because of the construction uh, costs that you can reclaim back on tax to reduce naturally um the the risk and your taxes on your investment reduce 100% um, legal protection of your investment property is really important sometimes there are some horror stories when you don't have a very good um property lawyer a solicitor um abogado and obviously with us with mercedes uh, we she's not only catalan 
but she and then she speaks English, but she understands inside and out all the tricks of the trade that used to exist before the um, advent of the EU, and and so she is well aware of what, um, um, well, how to protect your property rights, and so that's really important. So you're not losing out money, you're not going to be gazumped, you're not going to lose your deposit if you decide to change your mind, or you found something in the apartment, or we found something in the apartment that wasn't um that wasn't suitable for us um your guarantee that you will not lose your deposit okay so that's really important for us and the other last thing is that we we guide you we guide you we help you i'll be there in particular from beginning to the end to explain the process so why Barcelona is ideal for investors just to be clear here x and accessibility fastest one of the fastest growing economies in the eu with a focus of innovation and technology 4500 4, businesses located in barcelona 90 percent of those foreign foreign businesses are actually in barcelona um, not just in catalonia um, considered by employees of a lot of large organizations in the eu that um, barcelona is the city with the best quality of life very high demand by international buyers, people who are moving here. So competitive prices, so investors, international investors, you know that you will get a return, a health return because people want to live here. And just to clarify this last point, which is really, really important is there is a steady volume of historic apartments that are coming on the market that need renovation due to aging population, due to aging property owners and they just don't want to renovate they just not interested not into that into that really uh into that sort of game and so these properties are coming out of the market but there are also a lot of older properties that are just you just don't want to touch but due to poor natural light uh due to um, poor connectivity due to perhaps um no lifts or due to uh politics in the community building the community the the strata so there are other things. You don't just buy uh, a traditional property and it's going to work like magic. You really need, do need to do your due diligence. And that's why um, um, you can ask us. So why can we work together? Five reasons because I actually, five reasons why I absolutely love what I do. One is helping you guys, really transforming something that, as you can see in the photo, something that's pretty ugly um as way beyond a shelf life into something that is absolutely gorgeous this feeling this appreciation is priceless the other thing is building lasting relationships the relationships that i have with frank which is going on for more than um approaching 10 years um just due the my mum actually called him to to install balcony um balcony windows and from that we he was kind enough to, to help us out to help my mum who actually was dying of cancer and he was really generous with his time and and just really 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 lovely and so that was a perfect way for me to appreciate okay property people work in property they're not all about money it's not all about this it's not all about that like you just take 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 there is actually a wonderful thing reciprocity of our relationship here so that is really important for me the thrill of doing the deals the thrill of negotiating the thrill of going through this process of weaving through these potential obstacles and try and carrying you through the process that's just a lovely feeling the other thing is about really is about um um the market's changing things are changing here in barcelona it's a very dynamic place it's a very dynamic place and so it's just helps me uh inspires me to stay up to date with what's happening in the industries what's uh, happening in terms of construction what's happening in terms of architecture what terms in terms of congresses big events that are happening here sporting events for example what is happening here so really it's really lovely for me to um to really share that um that excitement that change that dynamism that is actually happening here and to really share that with you because the city doesn't really stop here and really the other thing is to to be open and transparent because it's not an easy process to go through all this. There's a lot of ups and downs um, in terms of um, you know time difference, in terms of property that you want to buy and gets taken. 
um, in terms of a particular construction material that might not be available, you need to choose something else. So all these little things that sort of come up, you know. Um, and so, but that is something that we are transparent and we share the information with you. Sometimes, um, sometimes it's not possible to share that because we know we don't want to wake you up <laughs> in the middle of the night um, because of a client complaining, the next door neighbor complaining, because, you know, we can resolve that. We can do that. So we're not going to necessarily share everything with you, but we will be transparent. We will be transparent in terms of how we work and really just making a positive impact of what we do and um, and making sure that you enjoy the process and you get your return. Okay, so just to summarize what we do, we find the right property for you, you buy that property, we show you, we give you the vision and we renovate the property and then we sell that property, uh, usually at the higher end of the market uh, because that's what people want to buy because that is what um, they want to buy into the lifestyle of Barcelona. So if you have any further questions, by all means, uh, give me a call, um, luminosainvest at gmail.com. Um, go to our website and you can find information there on www.luminosa.biz, B-I-Z. And, uh, and yeah, and again, my name is Edward Niembro and I am the property investment manager and uh, look forward to um, hearing back from you soon. Okay, all of us, wish you well. <clears throat>